All right, this is a uh, this is a video for the last lab. Okay, so here's what we're going to get. Um, so from the last lab, we're going to build a uh, slab, so you can make contact with the dolly, and we will do uh, two solutions. Uh, so first one is the no contact. We're gonna grab the wheel and uh, apply a load. So which is relatively easier but less realistic and the second round will we will have a linear contact and if you were in the class that's what Dr. Dada did on the on the model. So for the first uh, no contact situation we got 0 0.0196 for the total uh, overall distance uh, displacement so if you got within 10% of this value, uh, that'll be good. And uh, for the, uh, the contact problem, uh, that'll be a little bit bigger, um, 0 0.0251, uh, the overall, the biggest uh, displacement. So we're going to uh, to make this model. So first, let me turn off this one. And I have what we have uh, made in the last uh, lab. So should be uh, you should open the sim first, or then open the fan, or you just open the sim and you can find you can find your fan in the sim and double click, then you can find this uh, sim. Uh, this fan. So uh, I have a sticker here. Uh, that's what we are going to do. First, we're going to make the, the bottom, the ground. Then we're going to make the uh, spider in the center to to restrict the movement of the body to only Z direction. And we're going to run the first solution for no contact situation. Then for the, the last uh, solution, it's going to be uh, no uh, with contact. So let's start. And... Uh, for the the brick uh, ground, okay, uh, we will be building a uh, 10 by 10 inch with a thickness of 0.5 inch. So first, we need a couple nodes. Uh, insert node, and create. So it's 10 by 10. We can start probably. Let's see from the corner. That'll be a. Uh, if the it's ten by ten from top uh, from this top view, then the center is uh, in the middle. So we're gonna build a, a line of nodes on this side, which is five inch off from the uh, x axis. Okay. That'll be y here. So let's do this. Um, X would be 5 inch, Y would be also 5, so this will be a point on the top right corner. Then Z would be 0, or Z actually it's not 0. Um, you can either move it or you can just measure from a reference. We can try this. I've never tried this before. Uh, Okay, select a feature. Okay, not this one. Let's try measure the distance on Z direction. Start point is the origin. The end point will be the very bottom of your wheel. So that's the distance between uh, the bottom of the wheel to the absolute origin. And it's rounded up here, but it's accurate inside the software. So that will be our first point, apply, and F8. Now you can see that's the first point. And the second point would be the one on the negative Y direction. So it will be the bottom right corner. So that's two corner nodes. And we can take a look at the... Uh, okay, this one should be negative uh, whatever that Z is. So we can leave that 
alone, or if you haven't done that yet, you can change the z to a negative and the measured distance. Anyway, we can insert the other eight nodes between those. So we're going to uh, insert node and between nodes. We will have eight nodes between them, or rather nine nodes, because we have 10 sections. No, I'm sorry. 20 sections. So per cubic is 0.5 inch uh, square. No, cubic. So we will have 20, 20 uh, grids here, then we have 21 nodes. So we have 19 nodes to insert. And between this and that, 19 nodes. Oh, I'm sorry. That's, yeah, okay, just hit enter to make this effective. And okay, so that's 19 nodes on the Next, we're going to create a beam, uh, or we should modify the coordinate system, the coordinates first. So we're going to move all 20 of these, okay, to the bottom, and the coordinate system is going to be the absolute. Uh, where is the absolute? I don't know why it's asking me this. Yeah, we can use absolute. Okay, maybe because we have an uh, extra coordinate system. So we picked up that 21 nodes and the coordinate system is the absolute. Yeah, we can use global here, just that would be much easier. So global 21 nodes, we're gonna change the Z to put a minus in front of that. So apply, that'll make it to be flat to the wheel, so we can look from the side. And or we can make sure we can use measure tool, specify the vector, starting point is the absolute origin, distance, uh, pick either one, so 88256. And we can change this second object to the wheel. Make sure it's the bottom node. Uh, so this one. So 88256. That's good. So our beam is in place. And we can insert the beam element. So insert element and create. Now we're going to build a 3D uh, ground. We're going to build a start. Start from. 1D element. So C being that's fine. And we're gonna create from this end. Okay. If you have this uh, syntax problem, it doesn't matter. It will actually create the element. Okay. As you can see, the element is created. I don't know how internally this works, but actually that's just a warning. It will not interfere with your model. So next, make sure it's not auto creation and add to existing. So we're going to add this, all the elements into one mesh and just keep clicking this until you have 20. So maybe if you hate this, you can create uh, a brick in the CAD since you have all the CAD files. That will be probably faster, but you want to make sure you, you have control over your mesh. So that's the 1D element. Now we're going to extrude this. Okay. So where's my extrude? Extrude element which is exactly the same as this one, insert element, and extrude. I put this uh, toolbar outside, so extrude. Now we're going to extrude this uh, edge. So I'm going to pick everything from this view. Okay, So I can just pick up everything. And the copy is one copy. We're going to extrude it down 
to make the edge, not to make the side of this ground. And the vector would be negative zero, uh, negative z. And uh, the distance, distance, that's 0.5e. Okay. So think of this element. Yeah, for this, we can use c quad 4. Okay. And, okay. Now that's the side of our uh, ground. Then we're going to do act and extrude again. Now we're going to extrude this time element face. So we're going to extrude a 2D element into 3D. And this is a little bit hard to pick. You can just box select from a better angle. And uh, now this time the vector would be negative x. Right. If you rotate, you can take a look. That's the uh, negative x, and we need uh, how many copies? We need 20 copies. Um, again, that's 0.5 inch, and the hex 8 element. You can take a look at the results. If it's good, you can just click OK. Now we can use F8 to make sure this ground does coincident with the uh, with the bottom of the wheel. So to me, it looks pretty good. You can even zoom in more. Okay. And we did a measure tool, so this is uh, good. And now it's done for the uh, the ground. We need to delete this that 1D C bean and that 2D uh, shell element. So this bean collector, we just delete this. And also in 2D collectors, we will delete this, the side of this uh, ground slab. All right, now don't forget to give your ground a uh, material. So I have only one mesh here because I think uh, I put the, the, the bean element into one mesh and the dark Zarda had separated a mesh Maybe that's because of the, the C beings there in uh, different meshes. So anyway, we're going to assign this uh, slab a material. You can just use steel, and that'll be enough. All right, so next step is the center spider for, uh, for the constraint. So we can hide the solid element. And this is pretty easy. Uh, maybe we need a polygon first to insert that center node. So insert a node in the center of this hole. Okay. And it's, remember, it's the top surface of your dolly body. And we can turn off the cat. Then we're going to insert a spider which is here, 1D connection. Make sure this is RBE2, and the source node is going to be this one in the center. Target, that's the same, feature edge nodes. Let's pick this edge, now we can pick everything on this uh, circle. RBE2, and uh, we do have a collector for the dolly body, so I'm just going to put this spider into the same collector. All right. That's done for the spider. And uh, we're done in this fan. We can go to the sim. So <coughs> the easy one is no contact problem. So since we're going to grab some nodes on the, on the wheel, we can expand this uh, fan in the tree and also expand this we can hide the ground slab. And now we can grab the bottom of those wheels. Constraint, user define or fix um, as long as you kill one to three. Uh, as we said in the class, uh, the bricks, they don't have uh, four, five, and six. So no matter what you do for those three, 
it will not change. So user defined, I want all fixed. And uh, I put them on free because this will match the real situation inside your brick. Since they are already free. So you want box select, make sure this um, oriented view. Yeah, it seems like I cannot pick stuff. Okay. Sometimes this happens. You can turn on the model display, turn on your marker. Uh, this would be a little bit messy. Uh, that's fine. Then go back to constraint. Get what degree of freedom you want. So we can pick object. Six nodes for each wheel. That's the apex of the, uh, the wheel. So you should have 18 nodes for this constraint. And click OK. All right. Now for the first solution, that's the uh, no contact. Um, maybe it's better idea to change this to no contact. Of course, you can get even fancier. Say this is a solution 101 and no contact. And grabbing the apex, so you can say apex. And um, as you can see, we have a container for the constraint in this overall sim file. And we have this uh, container for the constraint inside the first solution. You can also add another solution, a new solution, right click on the sim in the tree, new solution. So this will be for the second problem, the contact problem. So it's still uh, solution 101. So you can say solution 101. Second one is contact. Okay. And uh, the case control should stay the same as the first uh, solution. So let's try output request SPC force. Okay, we want to change that to print. And yeah, okay. By the way, you can change that in uh, in the solve menu. All right, so now it's better uh, showing the stuff now. We have two problems to solve, and the second one is blue right now, so it's uh, active. Yeah, even you can just move this around, you can see uh, the second solution, or the second problem is active, and uh, the first problem is not. In this container, we have one constraint already made, but it's inactive now because uh, the second problem, we didn't use this constraint. So if we switch to the first problem or the first solution, double click, now you can see uh, this constraint is used. Okay, and the details inside here is we have this one constraint for the wheel and uh, Let's see what we need. Okay, we need another constraint for the slab. Although this one, the ground is not used in this simulation, in this solution, but we still need to fix it. And we still need to properly support it. Okay. Then we can hide the stuff. So I'm not picking up the other elements. And uh, we need a fully constraint or fixed constraint for the slab. Okay. <clears throat> and as you can see in the container we have two constraints and the, both of them are used in the first solution. Okay, let's show the the model. And uh, apply a load in the center. So this time, um, the load is trans transferred through the spider rigid connection to the body. Now let's use a force as in the load, 300 pounds, negative Z direction, and the object will be the center node. So I can hide 
the slab, just in case I pick any nodes on that slab. We can pick the center node and click OK. And take a look at this. Um, if you want to make it bigger, you can right click on the force, edit display. And in the scale, you can make it even much bigger. All right, so that's uh, 300 pounds in center. And fix the wheel, fix the ground, although they're not touching each other at all. And let's try a uh, model setup check. Okay, so only warning, no errors. So we're good to run this, solve. Uh, make sure we turn on SPC force. So I'm going to this attributes, case control, output request, SPC force on print, which is good, and run it. All right, so let's take a look at the results. All right, turn this off, turn this off, turn that off, and let's go to the results for the first uh, solution. So this uh, 0 0.0196, uh, it's the same as the, the one from Dr. Zara. So um, you can compare this to your results and we can proceed to the second solution, which is contact. Okay, so let's go back to, uh, well, before that, I think I need to show you how to show the stress and uh, some other things. We'll go back to the results and uh, um, in this post process, okay, uh, in this viewports, post views, if you expand this, you can see we can turn on and turn off elements. So let's first turn off the, the ground since we haven't used that. So that will be the, the bottom one. Okay. <clears throat> and if you like to, you can just, you know, play the animation. And uh, for the final report, we will ask for a uh, stress element nodal. So you would want to show minimum uh, principal stress. However, this is not a good view to show stress. Because uh, stress, you only want, you always want stress for only uh, one mesh or one item. So we can turn off the wheel, turn off 1D, turn off all the other things. We just need the the stress for the dolly body. So I guess that's so we can turn off everything now. Turn on the second mesh. Okay. So everything has this uh, two inside. That'll be the dolly body. Okay. Now that's the uh, minimum stress for the dolly body. And by the way, that's because our two D mesh has a normal. That's pointing upward and uh, outwards. So if you have your normal flipped, this value will be flipped. Okay. So that's the minimum um, principal stress for the dolly body. And you have to show only one piece of 2D shell on the screen for the stress. And let's take a look at the maximum principal. So this is the value. Uh, for the maximum principal stress. And as you can predict, this is pretty much the biggest uh, stress where you, you should go. <coughs> and this shape is probably defined by the, the shape of your spider for the body. All right, and that's how you turn off the elements in the post-process view. And you will need that for your your report. Okay, um, next let's go.
go to the, the solution with the problem with the contact. So um, let's go back to simulation. Go back to the model and turn on everything. <coughs> So we need to uh, create some contact between the wheel and uh, this ground. And uh, just to make things simple, uh, first, uh, we're in the second solution or the second problem. So you want to active this uh, second solution. So make this active. So whatever constraint or load you're building, now they will be added into this uh, solution. So as you can see, we don't, we can't see the, the constraint anymore because it's not inside this solution. And uh, since we're gonna use this one, you can just drag this one into uh, the solution. And now the this constraint is used by this uh, solution, so that's uh, active. And for this first one is the apex. We don't need this one. So we just leave it there. And load, we're going to use the same load, 300 pounds. So we can drag this force. So pretty much um, from here to the top, those are the, the setup or the containers for the same file. And underneath, you have multiple, you can have multiple uh, situations, multiple uh, solutions for your problem. You can have a non-contact problem. You can have a linear contact problem. And in this uh, linear problem, uh, we are going to create the contact. The contact is in this submenu. Uh, this is one of the simulation object. So if you open this, we have a surface to surface contact. I have no idea how we have initial temperature here. Okay. <clears throat> so, since we're doing a, a, a purely solid uh, mechanics problem, so don't have to worry about the temperature. Surface to surface contact, by default, it's automatic pairing. And uh, we want to use manual uh, pairing. And then uh, we have two regions, the source region and the target region. And as I said, uh, in the lab once, and in the doctor said that in the class too, the source should be um, the mesh that's finer. So, for example, in our case, the wheel has smaller size, the ground has bigger size. So, the source region uh, should be the the wheel, and the target region should be the, the ground. Okay. And how do we create a region? We don't have any here. You can just click on this one, create a region. Okay, so we, um, I'm going to create a region first inside the surface-to-surface -surface contact menu oh, dialog box. So we can say this wheel on the Y direction is the first wheel, the master copy in the fan. So let's create a source region. And you can rename this. I'm going to say this is the wheel one. And uh, we can use some method to pick up the elements of the face. So we're going to use feature angle element faces. And if you remember from last lab, it's going to pick up any faces within 30, uh, 30 degrees or within certain degrees of angle. So if I click this one, that face with, is within very small angle uh, of this face. So this one will be picked up, then so on, so on. The whole face of this uh, wheel will be picked up. So if I click here, that's the, the element faces that will be added to this region. Okay. If you want to see clearly, we can turn off the 2D and 1D. Now it's a little bit easier to see. And of course, we can turn off the other stuff like constraints. So that 
is the face for the source. And here you can define the direction of your surface. If you want the top of the surface or the bottom. So for the solid elements, usually it's the outside. So you don't have to worry about this. Okay. And the target region is the ground. So we can click here to create a new a region. Let's say ground. And it's still on feature angle element faces. So I'm going to pick the top one. You'll pick the top face of your slab. And click OK. And uh, for the contact property here, okay, we need to define the search distance. So this distance will, um, let's say this distance is um, any elements between the source and the target. If they're within this distance, the, the NX will consider they are in contact. So the parameter we got from Dr. Zarda is minus 0.3 inch to positive 3.3 inch. So between this um, distance, within this range, uh, NX will think, OK, those two elements, they are in contact. And then we can click OK. And as you can see, um, that's the normal of your region. So the shooting out arrows, that's the target, that's the source, I'm sorry. And those uh, bigger, shorter arrows, that's the uh, target. Okay, so you can tell from uh, this visual also. All right, so we have one face contact. Uh, we can go ahead and create another two contact between the other two wheels. And here I'm going to um, tell you how to create a region without get into the surface-to-surface uh, -surface contact dialog box. So if you look at the tree, okay, we have groups, we have regions, and if you expand this region, uh, those two are the ones we created in the uh, contact dialog box. And <clears throat> sometimes you can just uh, create all the regions you want before you go ahead and in, go into the contact or gluing uh, menu. So what we do is we right click on this region and you can create a new region. It's exactly the same as the new region button inside this uh, contact command. So we can go ahead and create the second wheel, uh, whichever you like. That's the uh, region for the second wheel, then we can create region for the third wheel, okay, and keep this on future angle element faces, and yeah, click OK. Now you can see we have uh, four regions, three wheels, and one of which is one of the, the means ground. Now we can add a more con contact. So this time we don't have to uh, create a new regions because we already did that. So from wheel 2 to ground, and again that's uh, minus 0 0.3 to positive 0.3. And we can click apply. So we're going to keep doing this for the third wheel. Ground minus 0 0.3 to positive 0 0.3. And apply. Now we can cancel this, and in this uh, tree, in the simulation object container, we have three contacts. Okay, we can zip it up, zip it up, and in the second solution, we have used those three contacts, and we have a constraint for the slab. We have 300 pound force acting on the body. Uh, however, we need the last constraint for the body. So let's turn on. The Actually, all we need is the 1D because we're going to grab the middle. So we can hide the 2D. Um, we can also hide the objects. That will give us a little bit clear view. 
<coughs> and that's the spider in the center of the dolly body. Okay. So we applied 300 pounds on this. Um, you also need to grab this node and constrain its movement to only at Z direction. <coughs> um, as to Y, let's see. Um, okay. So for now, we only have one constraint. That's the ground. So this whole dolly is free moving on top of this slab. And if you put 300 pounds, um, first, there's no friction. So it will slide X and Y direction. Second, your wheel sub subassembly. There's axle here that's freely rotating on the Z rotation direction. So really, you have a lot of movements on this model. And uh, if you don't constrain the body to move only at Z direction, it's going to slide on X or Y. And that's really um, arbitrary. So your solution will not run. <coughs> and uh, that's why we need this constraint to proper uh, support this structure. So. Uh, Again, we can hide 3D, hide 2D. All we need is the source node of that spider. And here, we're going to use user-defined constraint, fix everything except degree of freedom 3, which is a Z translation. And we grab the center node of the spider. Okay. That will ensure the body doesn't slide on X or Y. So let's take a look. Um, show all auto first. <coughs> Maybe wireframe. Then that's the three contacts. We have two constraints uh, that will fix the bottom, the ground, and uh, uh, kill the sliding on the slab. Then we have 300 pounds low. Let's try to run this. If you'd like to, you can do a model setup check. Uh, okay, this warning says your force is the same, applied to the same node as the uh, constraint. That's fine. So, solve and okay. Now, all you need to do is wait. So, It takes uh, a little bit longer than the uh, no contact prop. And you can take a look at the contact <coughs> convergence. Now the computer is working really hard. Okay, so that converts uh, pretty fast. Yeah, iteration. So close this. Close those three and take a look at the results. Displacement. And somehow I got bigger uh, movement. If you remember at the beginning of this video, that movement is uh, 0.251. That's because that's the original one Dr. Zarda sent me. And that distance, the search distance of the contact is smaller than than this one. Okay, this one is bigger. So we still got some uh, XY. Um, if you look at the wheel, they are skilled um, because the wheel subassembly can freely rotate on, uh, X, on the Z rotation direction. So although we fixed the, the uh, we killed X and Y for the body, but those three legs, they're still pretty free. Okay. So um, I think that's all for this video. And uh, just take a look at the uh, final report guidelines and make sure you read the requirements and what we need. For example, most of the time, um, for the stress, a lot of people will just show the stress for this whole model or 
show one misses stress instead of maximum principle or uh, minimum principle. So make sure you read the, the requirements, and I hope you uh, enjoy this uh, semester. Thank you.